Good evening, everybody. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guest tonight is a filmmaker, Marcus Sl- Slabin. How's it going, Marcus? It's going good. Uh, how you doing, man? Thanks for having me on. Hey, it was good uh, meeting you at Days of the Dead in Indianapolis. It was great to finally see you face-to-face. Same, man. Same, man. It, we, we, had, we had a really, really good time at uh, Days of the Dead in Indy. Yeah, now let's talk about... Um, you're part of the um, film stream, which is coming out August 23rd, and we were there to witness the first trailer ever before anybody else has. I mean, everybody's already seen it, but we got to see it in a full, crowded room where you couldn't fit no more people in it. So what was going through your head in the experience when you were sitting there with all the other fans with, witnessing stream the trailer for the very first time? <laughs> oh man so uh so i had seen michael had shown me the the trailer a few times before that um so um but like watching in a packed room is always a different experience um you know like 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 i, I was up front filming a lot of it and trying to sh- see everybody in the darkness of it but um it was it was so surreal because it's like you know you don't get that anymore like i'm i, I grew up I'm, I'm an 80s kid, so I grew up where, like, you didn't know a movie was coming out unless you went to the theater, and then all of a sudden there was a trailer before the film, and that's the first time you'd ever know that there would be, like, a sequel to Halloween or, like, a Lethal Weapon 3 or anything. And um, so, like, that that experience kind of brought that back was like, you know, these people never having seen this trailer getting to experience it for the first time with a group of people, um, with like the filmmakers, you know, with the, with some of the cast, with everybody. And it was, the energy was, it was invigorating. It was insane. You know, like I, I can speak for myself, but I can say that it was one of the coolest trailer drops. I think I've been a part of, um, and, um, you know, I think one of the people actually, uh, one of the fans, they actually were like crying because they enjoyed it so much. And that was so cool, you know? So it's, 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 uh, it's, you know, like we're trying to make stuff that's, I don't want to say like bringing back the old school type of film, but, um, you know, having that, the old feel of a group activity, you know, and seeing a trailer drop like that, plus it being stream and everything, especially for us, because we shot that in 2021 of January. So, um, yeah, you know, it was it was a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings came out. Yeah, there was a lot. And you have a big fan base for stream and it even hasn't even came out yet. But everywhere you go, there's always people cosplaying as some of the characters from stream, which I think is pretty cool. That's been blowing all of our minds. Um, the, the cosplaying that, that's been going on, we've been getting Michael, myself, Jason, all of us, we've all been getting tagged like nonstop. And it's amazing. You know what I mean? It, and I think the key thing that you said is the film's not even out yet. Like, the only thing that's come out is that is a couple of trailers, and people are already gravitating towards it. People are already, you know, um, thinking up like, uh, like me the other day. Michael got tagged in a picture or I think maybe it went to the official uh, uh, fan page um, in, on Facebook but it was um, a young like I think he, I think he was like nine a uh, kid that did his own cosplay like he created a player five and it was totally badass and we're like you know like like Michael messaged us and showed it to us and we're like oh my god this is this is so cool like you know, and seeing people really getting into it and coming up with ideas and coming up with different, you know, players and all that stuff and just, you know, dressing up as the players that exist currently. It's, it's, it's a really, really cool thing. And I think it's, you know, something that like we're hoping people when they watch it, um, want to, want to go even crazier with it. You know what I mean? It's, it's so cool. It's such a surreal experience. Also, your girlfriend had an awesome kick-ass cosplay as Player 3. She nailed that to the T. So far, I think that's the best cosplay of Player 3 I've seen. 
<laughs> I'm actually kind of biased with that one because um, because she is my girlfriend, but she but she was also the first one. Um, and she didn't even tell me that she was doing that actually. So she made the mask with the LEDs from scratch without anything more. Cause they had only been like, I think one of the teaser trailers had dropped, but nothing else had. So like she, she made the mask and, you know, on set, um, one of, one of, I was the production designer, but I, you know, there wasn't really a team for art so like i was also doing the props i was also doing the masks i was like so basically the masks that we had were like prototypes and they had like all these battery packs that were wired in and you Mm -hmm. had to turn them on and off and they were heavy they were they were not light um my hands got covered in sweat all the time so when she shows up with this lightweight led bright light that like also like lasts i was like I'm like, where were you like four years ago when we shot this thing? <laughs> we needed this. Um, but uh, yeah, no, no, Lauren killed that cosplay. Oh, Lauren, Lauren stilled it all the way. Uh, um, I know Lauren as well. She's a great girl and uh, she cosplays this a lot. And she always can make a cosplay outfit like out of nothing. She must be pulling the daredevil, putting the blindfold on, you know, making all those cosplay costumes. <laughs> <laughs> she did um one um if you played um uh smash brothers there there's one that's um uh it's uh the character mithra that one i think was one of the most impressive ones she did she uh i mean all of them always blow me away but mithra was really cool because she's covered in leds and like mm-hmm. the outfit was really intricate um and like it was just like she had like LEDs on her shoes, LED like lights on like on the sword on yeah. everything. Like she's 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 definitely got a lot of talent. Now let's go back to stream. You guys filmed this at at a creepy like hotel in haunted Gettysburg. I mean that I think that's kind of cool. You know, filming an indie horror film during COVID in a haunted hotel in Gettysburg. Um, so what was that like uh, filming during COVID, especially in Haunted Gettysburg? And you and plus you had some pretty uh, crazy stories with Felissa Rose as well. <laughs> oh my god. So okay, so uh, so the first part of that question, um that hotel was haunted as fuck. Okay. <laughs> that thing was that ha- so basically um, oh yeah, we're, this is this is a video, but I'm drawing out yeah. um fake math that no one's gonna see. Um, so basically, the hotel was like here, right? Mm-hmm. It was like right here, and then like you drove down like a road, and then you drove for like two minutes, and you were driving past the actual battlefield, like where thousands and thousands of people were, you know, killed, and. Like we we would drive back and forth on that to just do regular runs to go to like a restaurant to go to wherever, um, and it, it was it was that was like creepy all in itself. But the hotel man, we had so many crazy nights. Like we did ghost hunting with Daniel Harris, um, one of the uh, one of the uh, other producers on the film, uh, Craig Boydrin, is um, he has like all the equipment for um, for. Uh, so all the ghost hunting so he brought it with them like the the rods and everything else so we were going in the halls and it was just picking up crazy stuff there was one room that was like you walked in it was freezing there was like a bible with a dead bat on it like sprawled out it, this hotel was creepy as hell um and like we just had so many weird weird experiences there i mean um, and, you know, in shooting during COVID, um, we had shot a film, uh, uh, I did a film that was the first film to get shot during COVID. Um, right when COVID happened, it was called The Dark Offerings, we shot through Zoom. So that was, we couldn't, no one was in person. So that was like a surreal experience. And then Stream happened shortly after that. And it was the first time where we were like all in person shooting with each other, trying to make something. And it was it was a crazy experience because it was like we were quarantined in this entire wing of a hotel. 
where, you know, it's Gettysburg in January. Nobody wants to come out there. So, it, you know, in January, cause it's freezing. Um, and so we basically owned this hotel, um, at least a section. And, you know, like we would, it, we would like go to bed and we'd wake up and be like, oh shit, like, you know, like Jeffrey Combs is on set today or, oh, Daniel Harris is here today. Oh, Tim Reed's here today. Oh, Mark Holt. It was like all these people that we grew up watching and like horror icons and heroes that, you know, we'd be like, oh my God, we are stuck in a, in a place where nobody is able to do or be creative because of this pandemic and we are literally living our best lives right now. I mean, it was absolutely one of the, I still say it is one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had on a film set. Um, and, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's something I will never, ever, ever forget. <laughs> yeah, it's that's pretty cool because you also got a great cast. Like you said, you got Jeffrey Combs, Daniel Harris. Uh, don't forget uh, Daniel Rovebuck. An, 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 a, another great talented actor I mean and plus you also had David Howard Thornton you know Art the Clown who played you know one of the uh, players you know um, I bet you had so much fun with him I bet he was just a blast and creepy at the same time <laughs> <laughs> I love David I've known David for oh my god I I knew David before our Terrifier 2 I met him before that, but I've been friends with him for a while. I love David. He's um, he's he knows how to be extremely creepy, but like the instant that like you know David, like you just he pops in and out, and he's you know he'll talk your ear off and all that stuff. He's he's definitely one of the sweetest dudes. But him and I always geek out over video games all the time because he's also a huge video gamer. Um, so so we always geek out about that type of thing. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, he's got some crazy stories too. Cause he almost got, um, he almost got shot <laughs> on the set. <laughs> David almost got shot on the set. Was this like during <laughs> filming or around filming? So David tells the story way better than I ever can. Uh -huh. Um, but basically we were shooting and, um, there's a scene in the movie where that player is roaming the hallways yeah. and looking indoors. And I guess the hotel didn't tell, um, didn't tell some of the, a couple of the people that were in the hotel that, you know, we were shooting, the, the horror movie was shooting. So this woman just sees this guy, this, you know, with like this creepy glowing mask prancing down the hallway. Um, and uh, she comes out and she's like, you know, you guys are lucky. I'm a second amendmenter and, uh, you know, you almost got blasted through the door. <laughs> how old was the lady so she was practicing her second amendment right so was this lady oh, like she, old or what i i don't she was like 50s maybe <laughs> but i mean it was it was a really 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 hilarious moment I mean, like i said david tells it way better because he saw it firsthand but i mean like you know, uh, it's, it's always a good time whenever David's around. Um, I'm actually going to be seeing him in a couple of days. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see him. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, that, that's that, that's a great story to tell during the stream. Like, this, is, it's kind of like a little exclusive. Um, you And also in the film, you work with uh, Mike... You know Mike Levy, which we both know. I love Mike. Every time I see him, he's a, he's a cool dude, just like his brother Jason with Fuzz on the Lens. So, how did you become part of the project with uh, Mike and Fuzz on the Lens? To uh, and of course PJ Falcone. You gotta love that crazy guy who loves GI Joe <laughs> action figures. But that's a different story. But <laughs> wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Phil loves. Uh, I I did not know that Phil uh, Phil still loves uh, GI Joes. Yeah, he did. Um, I, I I did an interview with him um, on the podcast, and he talked about his love for GI Joe. So I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh man, I, I gotta bring that up to him next time. So I've known Michael. So like you know, you've probably heard in all of our interviews and everything with it, with whether it's with Mike, whether it's with Phil, whether it's with Jason, whether it's with any of us. Um, we are one big family, and like my you know, those, you know, 
the the Levies are they are my like like they are like my literal family. Like mm-hmm. I love those guys to death. I mean, I met Michael, I met Michael and Steve Della Sala um, on a film way back in the day um, hung, called Hungry for Love, and um, it was a um, one of our mutual friends was directing this movie. This um, a good guy named uh, Justin Ambrosino. And he, um, you know, uh, stuff happened on the film and the film ended up not happening. But I met Michael in, uh, I met Jason for two seconds. Um, and uh, they were finishing up their first film, uh, Abnormal Attraction. I was finishing up my film, Last Call. And we started, and um, they were doing all the effects for theirs. And then I needed um some pickups so steve came down and then we just kind of started you know like i went to their screenings they went to my screenings you know we would just start working on each other's films and started hanging out we just became really close and from there when stream came about um you know anyone that knows me knows that i am a ridiculously huge horror fan um and just like i mean i show you but i mean my entire wall is just all physical media and it's all blurry because I have that stupid filter on, but whatever. Um, so like, um, when, when they were doing stream, they, Michael calls me up and says, Hey, you know, like we, we want to do this film. It's called stream. I'd love to get you involved. I'd love to bring you on. Blah, 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 blah. So I came down into his basement. That's also where I met Phil Falcone for the first time. Um, and they told me the concept. They, I read the script and I loved it. And I was like, whatever you need, I'm down to help. So then, you know, everything started spiraling forward and we started, you know, we started just working together on everything else. But also once stream got close and closer to shooting, we all just kind of banded together and got to make it happen. You know what I mean? I mean, they, they really, you know, the boys at Fuzz, they really put together a dream team of of crew and of people that they've been working with over the years. So, you know, you have, you know, the team from Terrifier and they took those people from that they worked with and loved on Terrifier too and brought them over to stream, but then brought over other people that didn't get to work on that um, and brought them into this and kind of meshed the world. You know, that's also how we, um, um, we all started working with the, with the, with the boys from seashells productions, um, uh, Michael Laverty, Ilya and Dom, and then, um, you know, Jamie and like all these people kind of, uh, we all became one giant family. Now we just work on everything together. Like so far, I, I, how many films have we done since then? I think six, seven, I don't even know, but like we're, it's, it's one giant family, you know, we're, if you go to all of our Instagrams, you see us all hanging out together. You'll see us always together. It's because we all love each other. And it's also like, you know, they're the, I can't say enough nice things about Michael. And I know it's, and I need to stop because if I say too many more nice yeah. things, I'll never hear it. I'll never live it down. Um, cause I already hear Jason's voice in my head being like, stop. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm saying it to stop. And if I lived out in the East Coast, I'd be over at your house all the time watching horror movies. I'd be that one friend's like, oh, fuck, Rob's here today. <laughs> no, dude, I, it, it is like, it, it, I don't want to call it an obsession, but it is an obsession. I mean, I have about close to... Cool. Yeah, I think I have over 2,000 DVDs, Blu-rays, 4Ks. Um, I just have so many of them all over here. It's, it's insane. I, I just, you know, physical media will never die. And it's, you know, I think it's, I think it's a huge part of being an indie filmmaker, but also just being a film lover because there's just so much that streaming does. And I'm not saying that streaming is bad, but, you know, at the end of the day, streaming also removes things from its roster yes it does and once and once it's off there it's off you know i mean you have star wars posters all behind you and i think what i see is a highlander endgame poster yes Uh, you do but um i also i'm like you i have a huge 
Blu-ray and DVD collection too. Um, it's, it's it's just as much as you. And I like I said, I'm a strong supporter of physical media, and I just don't like it how you go to like all these stores now, and it's only like one little dinky shelf uh, of yeah. movies, and it just makes me cry. It does. It gives me a tear. It's because you know. Everybody wants to watch streaming. And another bad thing about streaming, you have to watch certain films, but they're not going to come on physical media. And you're forced to watch them streaming as well, like a certain movie or a certain, you're like, dang, this will never, ever come on physical media. But I like this film and you know how streaming is. So it'll keep a certain film and then it'll just mysteriously disappear off the service. So. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, most recently it was uh, My Fun Against Hush, which is like, you know, on its own, Hush is a great break in, you know, mm-hmm. like thriller. Um, and it's a really cool horror film. Like, and the fact that that was disappeared for, I, I mean, I think they just got picked up again or they're doing a physical media release. I think I, nice. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's Arrow or Shout or uh, Tino Lober, um, one of those companies. You know, but here, here's also the thing is that like what I'm also finding is that like you're getting a lot more from the boutique labels. Yeah, vinegar. Know, now. Yeah, my um, one of my good friends, um, Justin Martel, um, is produ- produced um, three new films that Vinegar Syndrome um, is releasing. They they were shot on film. Um, one of them that just came out on physical media is a film called Eight Eyes. Um, Eight Eyes. So I definitely um, got to check that out. Yeah, it is. They shot. I, I think they shot in Serbia. I forget where he said it's somewhere out there, but it is gorgeous. It stars like Emily uh, Sweet, um, and um, it's like this really cool. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, like the plot is very is uh, one of those movies. You know, it's these people they go over to this country and they're doing photography and they meet some creepy guy and you can kind of see where it's going but i don't want to give too much away so yeah don't yeah, about it. yeah don't ruin it yeah. because i'm like you of course i'm a huge star wars fan but i love my horror so it's star wars and horror yeah, yeah eight eyes i definitely gonna have to check that out um so since you live over in the east coast you know like by jersey and you know newark and all that how popular is indie horror uh, filmmaking in the East Coast? Is it like a hotbed, like how it is here in the Midwest where I'm at? Um, you want to know something? I think it is. I think that, you know, I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, and there's a lot of indie indie, indie filmmaking that goes on out there. Um, you know, I think, I think there, we now live in a time where it is so accessible to be able to make films and get equipment you know um and all and all that and i think any everywhere is kind of becoming a little bit of a hotbed the thing about new york is i think new york is one of those places where i find has some of the most um like hard-working independent crews out there like i've worked with people out there that have just killed themselves making these films you know what i mean like it is a very good spot is it expensive as hell to live out here yes it does that make things harder yes but i do think that like there is something about new york or new jersey filmmaking that like i i absolutely just like i really gravitate towards you know it's a lot of them i mean you know terrifier terrifier is born and bred in an independent film i mean the first one was you know had literally no money the second one was two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is not a small budget for an indie film but if you look at what was done in terror fire 2 that's it, it's insane what mm-hmm. was what, what they were able to accomplish you know what i mean it's like um like that it, the production value, everything with all these films that we've all done, um, we try to always show the production value over everything else. You know what I mean? Well, not over everything else, you know, scripts and all that. Mm-hmm. Always not one, but like, um, but yeah, the, it, I would definitely say that like it is, there is definitely a good melting pot of independent filmmakers out here that are trying to make films that are killing themselves every day to 
make some good stuff. I think so too. I totally agree with you. It's it's also like it here out in Ohio. There's um there's a lot of you know hardworking indie filmmakers, and then in Ohio, there's a lot of in, indie horror films, um you know being filmed. Just like you said, in New York, you know they're putting their blood, sweat, and tears in it, and you know. I I I just think I just think it's just like phenomenal. Now let's go back to um, stream. So, what's your thoughts of, since it's getting a theatrical re- a release? So, is there like more and more uh, theaters being added to? Um, when the tickets first came on sale, I got mine at my local AMC. I mean, they know me by name there, you know, first name basis. <laughs> and every time I go, it's like, Rob, are you seeing the film? Or are you seeing a double feature? <laughs> and then um, I was talking to a film goer. And um, I went to go see... What did I go see? Oh, yeah. I went to go see Long Legs of Nicolas Cage. Creepy-ass movie. I saw that, too. Yeah. So um, I was wearing my a Terrifier 2 shirt and it had CN on it. And uh, she goes, oh, are you, um, are you looking forward to seeing Terrifier 3? And I was like, hell yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Terrifier 3. And then I mentioned to her and I go... Are you going to see it? She's like, yeah. And I go, have you ever heard of a film coming out called Stream? And are you going to go see Stream? And then she's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, I was telling Mike, when um, when I go see the film, I'm going to see if I can talk to a couple film goers afterwards this, and uh, get like reactions, what they thought of Stream, and then like tag you guys. And I'm thinking about doing that afterwards and see – some will come on. Please do, a thousand percent. Please do. I mean, so like I'm. I know everyone's heard Michael say this, but I mean, um, you know, at the end of the day, stream, you know, has no studio behind it. There is the only people that are pushing this film are, you know, is Michael, it's Jason, it's it's the stream team. You know what I mean? And it's up to the horror fans really to get this film to decide if it's going to only be in theaters for five days or if it's going to get extended. You know, Terrifier 2 was only supposed to be in theaters for three days. And it was supposed to be one showing for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the pre-sales, which is why it's so vital we have, you know, that we're constantly pushing pre-sales, is the pre-sales were so good that they doubled those for terrifier two mm-hmm. on those days then it got extended the weekend then it then it was then it got extended a week then it got extended another week and when it comes to like you know and like when terrifier two hit it hit but also everybody started looking at I me mean, if you look at a lot of the stuff that's come out lately you know it's indie horror films have been coming out but it's like the studios are they noticed it they definitely saw it and they definitely were like wait a minute okay like you saw a film, wasn't my cup of tea. But like you know, you saw a film like Skin and Marink in theaters. Oh, I hated that movie. <laughs> hated it. <laughs> that, it. It was definitely an endurance test. But like before Terrifier came out, and like there was no way an independent film like Skin and Marink was going to get that type of theatrical release. It was like you know you've seen other films like In a Violent Nature. Or you're seeing all these indie films that are now being given these these releases and that's what i think we are currently in a time um of requels sequels prequels remakes you know legacy requel trilogy i don't know what the fuck they're even called anymore you know (laughs) it's like how, how many people can we cram onto the fucking poster from your youth is like every one of these movies and don't get me wrong i get suckered in like you know, oh, we all do. Back. I even get suckered yeah. in too. I, I feel you. So, since uh, Terrifier Three is going to be coming out, how how big do you think it's going to blow up at the theater? Because I know there's going to be tons of tickets sold for that. Oh, Terrifier! I I mean, look, I was a script supervisor on Terrifier Three. Um, I got to see so much, uh, and I can tell you right now. Terrifier 3 is not going to disappoint in any realm of if you liked the first two, if you love the first two, you're going to lose your fucking mind with Terrifier 3. There's literally, I literally was watching this one scene being filmed and I like zoned out and I was just like, and I went up to Damien after and I was just like, 
Damien, I just zoned the fuck out and I just questioned every single life choice that led me to this moment to seeing what the fuck it is that I am seeing right before my eyes right now. And he's just like, yeah, I know it's pretty fucked up, right? I'm like, yeah, dude, what the fuck? Like, it is, I, I personally think that like, I think that this is going to be like Nightmare on Elm Street 3, where like, you know, the first Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, like, was a hit, right? And everyone looked at it, and everyone was talking about it, and everyone was thinking, you know, loving it. And then the second one came out, and it was like, ah. And then the third came out, and everyone, including myself, regarded as the best of Nightmare on Elm Street. It is, totally agree. to me, the best Nightmare on Elm Street ever made. Um, and I think it's the one that really pushed Freddy out of, you know, Freddy out there. I think it made him a household name at that point. And I think that's what's going to happen with Terrifier 3. I think Terrifier 3 is going to blow up. I think, you know, um, I the script is really good. You know, Damien's pouring every bit of blood, sweat, and tears into cutting it together. You know, everybody, the whole team behind it really really killed themselves to make something um to make something that would not only satisfy the fans not only satisfy newcomers but like be a film that people talked about and remembered and i truly truly am honored to have been able to work on it you know i've been a part of it and see you know um everything happen i mean it's just it's it's insane i'm i'm telling you right now the rumors about David Howard Thornton getting sick during one of the scenes is a hundred percent true, and it was probably one of the funniest moments of the whole shoot. <laughs> I, I bet it is. Now, uh, one question. Okay, when Damien Leon first, you know, uh, you know, did Terrifier, and then he brought Terrifier to the theater, you know, just like how Wes Craven bought, you know, the original Nightmare Elm Street to theater because that that was an indie horror as well. So that made that that just exploded, just like how Terrifier is exploding. So during that same time when Wes Craven did his film the first time, and then when Damien did his at the theater, do you think Damien is at the level where Wes Craven was first starting out? You know, it's it's hard to really compare because it's like. I think everyone has their own trajectory with all that stuff. And I think Damien is creating a name for himself in terms of the way he shoots the, the films that he loves. I mean, you know, I, I worked on Terrifier too. I met, I did, um, I'm, I'm one of the, I'm all over that club scene. I'm the sugar skull bartender. I'm a, the a, a um, pie piper. Mm-hmm. And I'm like this guy in a gas mask. I'm all over that. And then, but like, I didn't really get to know Damien until we did stream and on stream, you know, like Michael had kept saying, he's like, you need to meet Damien. You two are going to like hit it off really mm-hmm. fast. It's going to be, you know, he can just tell. And like, finally we connected and we just like that man's knowledge of film is astounding. Like he has such a true love for cinema. He loves, you know, like the great films like him and i've had like so many long 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 conversations about robocop or lost boys or jaws everyone will tell you right now how much we annoy everybody with jaws um in fact (laughs) um i'll go into that story later but um but like i think that the the road damien's paving for himself right now with with the terrifier films and what he's doing and what else he's capable of doing, I think is going to put him up there. You know what I mean? Like I definitely do. I definitely think, you know, he has his finger on the pulse. He knows what people love. He knows, you know, cinematically, like, like he knows there's, there's just certain choices. I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm even allowed to say. Mm -hmm. Um, But like there's certain choices that he does in Terrifier 3 that I was like, that's fucking cool. Oh, yeah, that's this and that. And it's, you know, so, like, I definitely think, you know, like, I think people are going to really see um, Terrifier 3 in a different light because it is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous film. And it's, you know, and I think Damien, I think Damien's going to be around for, for a very long time. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, like I've said, I'm excited for that, but I'm excited for uh, you know a stream as well. I mean, like I said, it's 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 getting popular, and like I said, the film hasn't been shown. You know, same thing with Terrifier three. I mean, look at um, stream, and plus on stream, you also had Felissa Rose too. You know, I bet I I bet she was fun to work with. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I, I love Felissa. Felissa, um, Felissa and I have been good friends for for quite a while, um, <laughs> and um, we were drinking buddies on stream, and um, which he completely threw me under the bus in front of everybody during that trip. <laughs> I was like, Felissa, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> Like, I mean, there was, like, one night where, like, literally, basically what happened was, was that, like, we were shooting, she was coming into town, and, um, um, she called me up, and she's like, Marcus, we're drinking, and I get around everybody up, and I started trying to tell everybody, and everyone's like, bro, no, we're, we're exhausted, we're, we're not drinking, and I'm like, you guys, like, I, like, come on, so everybody bailed. Everyone was like, we're going to bed, we're going to bed. And I'm like, awesome. So it was just Felissa Rose and I. And for six hours by the pool, um, there was like this indoor pool. Yeah. You'll see it in the film. Yeah. Um, and um, I took a bottle of... Um, I, I, I took a bottle of whiskey to the face and she took a bottle of Tito's to the face. And by the time we were done... I went upstairs. Michael, the the next day, was already starting to start shooting. Michael comes out and goes, all right, you ready? And I go, fuck you, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, I, and, I, and I bet the look on Mike's face had to been priceless. <laughs> oh, he knew. He knew. He knew what, what transpired because probably what came out of my mouth was, well, I'm going to do this, fuck you. Because I was, I, I mean, I was fucking bad. I was done. I was like, oh my fucking God. But yeah, no, no. Felissa is always, always a blast to, to have on a set and always a blast to hang out with. <laughs> that, that's pretty funny. And, and, and another cool thing about Stream as well, you mentioned Damien Leone. He's working on the film too with uh, Phil Falcone to make all that great blood and all that FX type of stuff. And when those guys get together, they're like a transformer. They connect and they just have this like messed up minds and they make these great kill scenes and all this blood. Um, they must have had to been born together at birth together. <laughs> <laughs> The two of them together, it's, you know, I, I've, I've, I've seen, you know, them at work and it's really, it's a really, really beautiful thing to see those guys together. You know what I mean? Like the effects on stream, there's some fucking gnarly shit in this movie. Um, you know, and the work that both of them did, you know, was really, truly incredible. You know, I've, um, Phil, Phil is one of those guys that like, Honestly, he's one of the best guys to know. He's always, he always, he's one of the funniest guys I think I've ever met. And the, the thing I love about Phil is that this guy doesn't bullshit anybody. He just tells he it like it is, you know, and he's, he's got such a good sense of things and watching him and Damien work together, whether it's on Terrifier, whether it's on stream, you know, it's, it's truly awesome. You know, we got, um, on, uh, um, on my film, I Want Your Skin, uh, we had a giant prosthetic. It's about a, the film's about a skinless creature that chases a girl through Chinatown telling her he wants her skin. And there's a scene where the girl gets the gloved. So the, um, we had, uh, Phil come in and, um, do the, the skinned arm nice. part of it. And, and watching Phil work was absolutely, absolutely incredible. It was just, you know, like, he loves, he loves doing all that stuff. Feels so hands-on with things. So, like, you know, getting to see him do that and work his magic, it was really cool. That has to be cool. I would love to be on the set to just to see Phil work, and especially Damien. I mean, I know he's a good filmmaker, and he's also good at making twisted kills and stuff. I would like to just sit there one day and just, just be at maze some of the sick stuff they come up with. 
<laughs> Everyone says that uh, un, un, until they uh, they're they're on set wearing their favorite shirt and a blood squib goes off and it covers them from head to toe in fucking blood. <laughs> now, <laughs> okay, I, I, here's one uh, one crazy question: um, If there was a male version of Laverne and Shirley. Who would be Laverne and Shirley between Phil and Damien? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, shit. I would definitely say Phil is Laverne. Damien and Shirley. 100%. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can see that too. <laughs> I, that, you need to make that. You, you need to do like a Photoshop of that and put it. <laughs> put it on with put like Phil's face on on Laverne's and body and vice and yeah you, 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 that, that needs to happen and that needs to be sent and posted and sent out into the internet that's that has a meme that's one thing I like about my podcast sometimes like some crazy stuff just comes out of my head <laughs> <laughs> now um so what projects are you working on um, besides stream and being part of Terrifier 3? Is there a movie you're working on that's going to be coming out in the world of indie horror? Or? So, yeah. So um, we're, me and, me and um, two of my producers, um, Stephen Katanka and Clifton Dunn, we're working on a project called um, Errors of Terror, which is a horror anthology, which is also um, the Fuzz on the Lens, um, the same team. Fuzz on the Lens is all working on it as well they're also producers on it um we're doing um it's basically it's a horror anthology that takes place over different times so oh, nice. one takes place in the 50s one takes place in the 60s you know the one that we shot which is i want your skin um and it stars uh damien maffey from the strangers um oh, no. night and haunt and, nice um he yeah he plays that skinless creature that's uh oh so lovely um and then um so that one is the modern day one. So we're working on on that right now, um, and hoping to finish shooting that because we're shooting that one in, in pieces and stuff like that um, as we go. I'm also doing. Um, I'm got hired on to direct a upcoming feature that's a found footage feature once again with Damien um, Uh Gotta have to. <laughs> distinguish which Damien in these conversations. <laughs> I know. Not uh, Leon Maffei. Get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, Maffei is like, like uh, I've, I've worked with him on quite a few projects at this point and um, I just, I you can kind of tell that I'm someone that I love working with the same group of people. Once I like someone and once I see that they're good at what they do, you know, like almost everything I have, I worked, I've done as like Terry Alexander I tell people I have a Terry Alexander clause in my contracts um, that if if I'm making a movie, Terry has to be in it somehow, some way. So, um, so it's called uh, Sundown, and it's um, a found footage movie about these people, uh, uh, about this filmmaker Bill that's going up with his best friend to check on his friend's mother, whose husband just died, and um, she keeps saying that she's seeing him around the house and hearing him and the son's basically like look i think my mom's going crazy um and i want her to sell the house and move into an assisted living house you know but you know and bill's like oh well i can turn this into a movie so he's trying to shoot a documentary around it and i won't say anything more but we're shooting that in september um of this year and then um uh, we have, you know, those, those, those two projects are really the ones that I'm really working on. And then I'm working, trying to figure out how to, uh, get more funds for, we shot a sizzle for, um, a night of the living dead sequel, which is no longer called that. Um, and it reunited the cast of George A. Romero's day of the nice. dead. So Lori Cordell, Terry Alexander, Joel Conroy. So we're, uh, looking for ways to, it's been, repackaged and everything else and we're looking for ways to get that one out there um the sizzle's completely shot so yeah man you know so those are the three things that i've got cooking right now and a couple other scripts that i'm writing and you know and uh, right now it's all stream baby 
<laughs> That's right. You got to join the stream, baby. That's where it's at. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hashtag join the stream. Get those pre-sale tickets. Yeah, August 23rd <laughs> at a theater near you. Remember that? 21st. Oh, sorry, not 23rd, 21st. Well, how come I keep on thinking? How come I think keep on thinking about the 23rd? It's the 21st. Okay. <laughs> well, cuz the 23rd is actually um is actually a Friday. So, stream's coming out on a Wednesday. Okay, um, the 21st. I got my tickets. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mike, but, so. Mike and all them don't don't yell at me. I, I said the date wrong. Um, thank you for Marcus for correcting me because I know because I know Mike's going to be listening to this and he's going to go that bastard said the wrong date. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, look, if you had said like August, like you know, like August twelfth, then yeah. But I mean, like August twenty third, it's still in theaters at that point. You know, I mean, look, look a film like Stream. Pre-sales are so vital to it solely based on yes, one is. factor is that if, if it does well, if a film like Stream that has no studio backing does well, then the studios are going to go, oh, we want more of this independent film mm-hmm. that is, you know, like homegrown, like this type of thing. And that's what we want. We don't want, you know, like, um, you know, like... Uh, uh, I can't even think of a name of it. Oh, Jurassic World Dominion Part 17. You know, we, we, you know, people I think are thirsty for original content. I think they are. are thirsty for, for new ideas, for new concepts, for new characters. I mean, it's, you know, like one of the things about art is that he's new. He's not Jason. He's not, you know, mm-hmm. it's not just a remake of the same slasher. He's something different. I think people are gravitating towards it because it's a breath of fresh air. From just seeing, you know, don't get me wrong, like, I will watch Michael Myers, you know, come out of the old folks' home and slaughter people, you know, for the next 20, 30, 40 years. I mean, but, you know, let's, you know, let's get out there. Let's show people that independent film is, mm-hmm. is what we need to be looking at yep. instead of looking at just bringing Robert Downey Jr. back to play Dr. Doom, which makes absolutely no sense, but, like... You know, so it's like that's why it's so important. Just get pre sale tickets, get your friends to get tickets. You know what I mean? Go fill the theaters. If you can't go, just buy a single ticket and, you know, leave the seat or give it to somebody. It doesn't matter. As long as it's, there's asses in the seats, it will get extended. And if it gets extended, it says, hey, we want more of this. Then it becomes easier for independent filmmakers all over. You know, in like Ohio, in New York, in Boston, you know, in Texas, you know, all over the world to get films greenlit. And that's what we want, you know. Um, So make sure you get your asses out there and get those tickets. Yeah, uh, get your stream tickets at Fandango, of course, and of course, AMC Theaters, and you know, hashtag, you know, hashtag join the stream, hashtag support indie horror, hashtag support indie horror filmmakers, <laughs> and then hashtag just support indie film. It could be horror, it could be all genres, just go out there, and also, you know, like I said, I have a feeling there's going to be a bunch of people going to be buying tickets for stream. I just have a gut feeling you know, I, I, I just do. I think I think it's going to have a good uh, run at the theater. That's what we're hoping, man. You know, like, and we appreciate all the support from you and everyone else that's been really championing this film. I mean, you know, it's very hard to get people to buy into an IP, you know, or yeah. any type of, like, film or concept or anything. Yeah. Um, before it's out there. You know what I mean? It's like... It's like, um, like you look at a film like, like Shawshank Redemption, mm-hmm. nobody gave a shit about. Then, now it's considered one of the greatest films of all time. You know, there's so many movies out there like that, like Blade Runner or John Carpenter's The Thing. Both films flopped at the box mm-hmm. office. Both of them came out the same friggin' day. Now, that's a double feature. Mm-hmm. Um, both of them came out bombed and are now revered as the greatest films. It's like, when you go out there and you support these films and you just, you know, like, like, and granted, I know the thing is the remake, yada, 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 it's the greatest remake ever made, but, you know, it's, it gets, it sends that message, 
that that's what we want. You know, when everybody goes and sees, you know, like a film like Jurassic World Dominion and that makes $500 billion, guess what? They're going to make another, you know, film mm-hmm. and they're just going to be like, oh, which other actors can we just bring in and throw in? I mean, I'm a huge Ghostbusters guy. Frozen Empire. Uh, no, that was. Drink. No, Frozen Empire was garbage. And I don't care. I know a lot of people are huge Ghostbuster fans. And I know they're going to listen to this and they're going to hate me. Um, I, I liked the first film before Frozen Empire. To me, Frozen Empire was just a big disaster. I love how they brought the original cast back, but they still couldn't save that film. Here's the problem with it. It's the same problem with Jurassic World Dominion. And I'm only saying it because I have the 4K Blu-ray over here that's been sitting in my pile. I own that movie. Probably the past. Look, I I got a guy that, and I bought it off of him. Um, I got it for five bucks. I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'll watch the extended opening bit because dinosaur in movie driving. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been sitting here ever since. Um, it's piled. Um, <laughs> that's it's just like piled. mine. <laughs> My collection. Yeah. Oh, I, have a, I have so many piles here. <laughs> I do too, and they like stack up. And um, that's just like yeah. my that's just like my um, uh, DC and Marvel comic omnibuses, the big thick omnibuses. I got like them yeah. so stacked high from the buying them at, from the comic book store. You know, it's like, dang man, I could build a castle with these. <laughs> I, I, it's the only reason I never got, I could not get into buying comics. I just couldn't. Cause I, I just, I don't have much space. I mean, I live in New York. Yeah. But like the problem with those films is that they don't know which story to commit mm. to. Yeah. Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire spent so much time trying to, sh- to, to tell the story, which was, would have been a good enough story on its own of, of race dance and, er, and, um, you know, Winston Zeddemore. Yeah being together and like realizing they're really getting too old for this and they have to stop doing it. That's a good story and having Bill Murray a little bit in there. But then they also pulled in, you know, the family from afterlife, which I really did enjoy. But, and then it's like, you have all the five characters from that. You have the three old ghostbusters plus Janine plus Walter Peck, plus like, you know, four others. Plus the new characters, like the, the, the gadget guy that's like, oh, well, here's your new proton pack, guys. Here you go. <laughs> and then, like, Ball you know, the ghost, the, 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 the ghost relationship of the girl falling in love with the ghost girl. And it was like, I'm like, what the fuck? And then in the final five minutes of the movie, he's like, oh, yeah, here's the ghost. And I'm like, what? <laughs> But the ghost is cool as fuck. Why are we getting this for five minutes? This exactly. I want to see. Like, <laughs> like, what the hell? Why did I just sit through like, like an hour of like the kid from Stranger Things talking about how we can't get his license? <laughs> like, that was his storyline. Hey, you're too, hey, you can't get your license, but I want to drive. <laughs> Not yet, son. And at the end, there you go, son. And they toss him the keys. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is all of a sudden you get to drive? Like, what the hell even is this movie? It was the same thing with Jurassic World. It was, you had Sam, you had Alan Grant, Ellie Slater, and fucking Ian Malcolm's story. That was like an hour long storyline. Then you had like Chris Pratt and, um, uh, uh, I can't even think of her name right now. Um, I Laura Dern. It was name. Laura Dern who played in the film. Laura Dern. Um. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about the uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. <laughs> you know, their storyline that's going on for another hour, and they're intercutting it like it's like. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like we have you're going from like, oh, we're going back to the nostalgia, and then we're cutting to fucking like, <laughs> Zim, I don't know where the fuck they were riding motorcycles with raptors chasing them in mosh pits, and in their own shots where they have so many characters together that they can't even do a medium shot because there's eight characters. <laughs> no one's to find. There's nothing going on. And it's like, like I'll never forget. They all run up a ladder while the T-Rex or whatever dinosaur they create <laughs> yeah. that movie chase them. And it shows two of them going up a ladder and then it just hard cuts them all being up there because they couldn't show 12 fucking characters climbing a ladder because it takes forever. <laughs> Fuck that movie. Sorry. <laughs> so, where can they find you on social media? What you're doing next? 
For <laughs> <laughs> people still listening after I just my rampage don't get me going on certain movies hey you know something hey know something marcus we're gonna definitely have to do a part two and just talk about our love for cinema we'll do (laughs) oh we have to we have to i i'm definitely having you i'm definitely having you back on man oh my gosh you are oh my gosh you're such a blast oh dude i'd love to come back no dude this has been fun um so so you can find me on um instagram at at they at symbol um um at Marcus Slavon, just this just my name. Um and I'll pop up. Um also on Facebook, um Twitter, although I never use Twitter. But um, yeah. yeah, you can find me on those and then make sure you also follow um stream franchise. There is currently a contest going on. It might not be on, I don't know when this is airing. But um, if you pre-order your ticket, you post a picture of the ticket and tag Stream Franchise, you can be entered to win um, an awesome signed mask from from Scarepros, which is one of the best horror shops, costume shops out there. Yeah, um, Chris, who runs it, is a fucking awesome dude, and loves like like he's he he does. He does his customers and he does his people right. So, like, you know, make sure to go out there, support him, go check out the store. If you're a horror fan, you're going to fall in love and lose your rent money on it. But um, you'll get a signed um, stream mask, um, a poster, and some other stuff. Um, But, yeah, make sure you do that. And also follow the Stream Franchise group on Facebook and also Instagram. I mean, there's a lot of great people that post some cool posts, and it's such a great fan base. And Marcus, thank you so much for coming on out of your busy time to hang out with me. Oh, thank you so much for having me, man. This, this this has been a blast, and thanks for letting me rant a little bit about those movies. Hey, hey, I, you know something? I had fun ranting with you on uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And I'll tell you this. I will not buy it on physical media. I, I have Afterlife. But I'm not going to buy that on physical media. I'm uh, like, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't have it on physical media. And, and it kills me because I have to own them all. Like, you got to own them all. <laughs> I know. I'll probably be a sucker. I'll probably find it for five bucks somewhere once it goes down. Maybe at a Goodwill or something. Who knows? I'm on a Facebook group and they do sell them for five bucks. And I just when I'm like, all right, I'll take I'll take Frozen Empire now for five bucks. Cool. Right. I'll, it'll sit in the pile. I'll, I'll stack it in there along with Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Oh gosh, that was a horrible movie. But anyways, everybody have a great evening and talk to you guys.